In today's tip, we're going to talk about the difference between bevel down and bevel up hand planes. One of them's a blade is upside down. The wood doesn't care. Okay, on to the bonus. What, y'all expected more? Okay. So for examples of a bevel up plane, we're gonna be using my Veritas uh, jack plane. And for an example of a bevel down plane, we're gonna be using my Miller Falls, which is very similar to the Bailey's, only better. So let's look at the differences between the two. The main one being in the blades. As you can see, when you pull it out, the bevel on a bevel up plane is on the upside and it's flat on bottom, whereas a bevel on a bevel down plane is on bottom and it's flat on the top. Let's first talk about the bevel down planes. And notice the difference in thickness. We'll get to that a little bit later. This is the traditional style, and this style of hand plane came about back when steel was really expensive. And one of the ways you can tell you have a really old plane if it has the original blade on it, if you look down towards the base of it, you'll actually see a weld line right around there. And that's because they used to put the good steel, hard steel on bottom, and then they used kind of the cheaper steel on top because steel was so expensive. And then steel came to the point where it was cheap enough that they could make the whole blades out of them, but it's still, they made them very, very thin so as to not use that much. Now, if you were to cut with just this blade, you would get a lot of chatter because the blade itself would vibrate. You can flex it with your hands. And as you're going through the wood, if you've ever seen those chatter marks, that's typically caused by a blade flexing. So what they did, not only to increase mass, but to put the blade under tension, is they created these chip breakers. And the chip breakers have many other purposes. I have another video on talking about chip breakers from a few weeks ago that I'll put a link down below to. And they added mass, but they also put the blade in tension because whenever you assemble this chip breaker to the blade, it squeezes the spring down. So it acts like one big piece of metal that has a different thickness throughout. So it's a little bit thicker down there than here, and that kind of counteracts a lot of vibration if you understand a little bit of physics. The other thing is, you basically have three parts to a blade on a bevel down. You have the screw, and you have the chip breaker, and then you have the blade. The chip breaker controls not only how shavings come off the tip of the blade, but also how you adjust the blade left, right, and up and down. Because it has a little slot right here that engages in with the plane. Whereas most bevel uh, up planes, they use a fairly thick blade, and that thickness detracts from any kind of vibration, and all the adjustment mechanism, the adjustment slots are in that blade. I do find, personally, that this is an easier blade to sharpen because it has such a wide, wide bevel, I can actually find it, hear that, very easily to sharpen it by hand. You don't really need a jig with one of these. It's very easy to learn sharpening. Whereas with this, these, they're actually such a small bevel that you can't really feel it that easy. And there are a lot of people out there that just tell you don't worry about it, just get it close and it's okay to add a kind of concave to this if you are sharpening it by hand, which most of us nowadays, I believe, probably use the uh, hollow grinding method and since that bevel just isn't that big, it's a little bit more difficult to do it that way. Now, there are a lot of aftermarket companies if you want to get a thicker blade to make it perform even better. But when you do that, when you have to be considerate of the plain bodies. If you look at these, most all Bailey styles, and this is uh, Miller Falls is very similar, they have a frog. And a lot of us make sure that the frog is in line with this base section right here. But the frog is movable with these two screws. You can move it forward and backwards. That way, if you want to increase the 
tightness to the mouth to make it take a finer and finer shaving in a curlier and curlier, more difficult wood, you can do that. It's a simple process, but you do need to take into account that A, you need to leave enough room for the shavings coming out, but B, if you put a thicker blade on it, some planes might not have the adjustment room coming back so that you have to have enough of an opening in front. And believe it or not, it is not uncommon for this front metal piece right in front of the mouth to break off on these because the pressure of the shaving coming up is so much it pinches it, they just snap off. These, the older ones were not the nice ductile metal they have. They're the kind of metal where you hit them with a hammer and they crack. So if that's the case, you might have to file the mouth open. It's very, I don't want to call it difficult, but it's kind of time consuming and finicky to adjust the mouth opening on a Bailey style or a traditional bevel down hand plane. But that frog, this piece right here, does give you some advantages and we'll talk about that later. Whereas, with a bevel up plane, this being a example of pretty much all of them out there, and the thing about these is these weren't that popular when they came out when they were made by Stanley. They were targeted, unlike these, which were made for joiners and woodworkers and bench workers, they were kind of targeted for people that made butcher blocks, in grain cutting. Getting this low angle is really phenomenal for cutting uh, butcher block ends. And what I see, mean by low angle is when you place this down, the bed angle is quite a bit lower, and then you put the bevel, so the angle that the blade is actually interacting with the wood is a combination of the low bed angle and the bevel on the blade. Whereas the angle of a bevel down plane is just the angle of the frog because the top of the blade is flat. Now you can buy different angled frogs, but don't waste your money. Now all the adjustment mechanism for this, this, these style planes is basically two parts. You have an adjustment lever that flies off back and left and right, and you have two slots right here. That way, as you wear it down, you can move it back to the next one, and you can get more life out of the blade. But tuning it up is just dropping a little bit of oil in there and adjusting it left and right. And you can see left and right adjustments are like that. Adjusting it in and out is just with a screw. I will get to the left and right adjustments. I think this is kind of a waste but the moving in and out with this screw is very effective. But one nice advantage of pretty much every beveled up I've seen is that this section right here is what is adjustable. You can loosen up this knob, and this is a fine adjustment down here, and adjust the mouth, open or close, by adjusting this front section. And that sure does make closing and opening the mouth a lot easier. They call these jack planes because they're the jack of all trades. And one of the key advantages of this style, where the mouth is easily adjustable, is that you can go from taking thick shavings to thin shavings fairly quickly. So you can actually turn it into something like a scrub plane just by putting a different blade in it that might have a deep camber on it. And if you need to take a really fine shaving in something like a coarse wood, well, just put a different blade on it that has a steeper angle so that the co combination of the bed angle and the blade angle makes it a little steeper. In fact, I typically keep three blades for this hand plane. One with a much steeper angle for doing very... Uh, curly grains, and then one for like if I'm trying to really hog off a lot of wood on something like curly maple, it's what they call a tooth blade. And these are kind of unique to these bevel up styles. It allows you to take thick shavings without getting as much tear out. Now that isn't to say that you can't do a very similar thing with a bevel up plane. You can buy a new chip breaker and blade combination and just get it nice and con cave so that you can use it as a scrub plane and then file open the mouth a little bit more so those thicker shavings can come out. I have heard of people turning these into toothing planes but one of the main complaints has always been 
this flexibility of having multiple angles on the bevel ups that are easily done with new blades. You can do the same exact thing. You can increase the frog angle or the combined angle right here by simply putting a back bevel on your blade. But if you do that one, you're pretty much making the blade unique to that angle. And what I mean by back angle, the bevel is on this side. If I were to, instead of making this dead flat, to sharpen it down a little bit, then you get the same kind of effect where the angle of the blade going through the wood is a combination of the frog and the blade itself. So in effect, you can raise it up a little bit to make it a little bit steeper for those very difficult grains. But, but once again, if you ever want to remove that back bevel, you have to grind off quite a bit of metal to do that. So all this might be telling you, hey, maybe these bevel up planes are a technological leap forward and that's what you should get. Hold your horses. There is a reason why those guys that used to earn a living preferred this, I'm going to call it a Bailey style from now on, of plane versus the bevel up plane. Because they had this as an option. Remember me telling you that this was kind of originally designed to flatten butcher block, to cut uh, end grain. And that makes it phenomenal for like shooting boards and stuff like that. Much better than this style. Both will get you a good crisp edge if you got a clean, sharp blade. But this is easier for cutting end grain. But those guys didn't cut end grain that often with a hand plane. That's what the saws were for. Uh, they were mainly straightening stock, smoothing stock, and flattening stock. And they preferred this style. Why? Well, to learn what those are, you're going to have to come back tomorrow. Ah, Cliffhanger! Hey, this video is getting a little too long for a daily tip, so we'll continue it tomorrow. Since we're talking about metal body planes, for today's bonus, I thought I'd introduce you to my favorite metal body plane. My block plane. But before that, if you've enjoyed this video so far, I'd like to ask you to please like, favorite, subscribe. Do all those social medias. It really does help promote this channel. And if you've gotten some long-term benefit from some of our long-form videos, which I'm more known for, and these little short-form excerpts, please consider visiting our website, WorthEffort.com. I've got a lot of ways you can patronize us, in addition to getting more information through articles and such. Once again, it's WorthEffort.com. Because remember... It's always worth the effort to learn, create, and share with others. I think it is fair to say that the block plane is probably the most commonly sold hand plane out there. I mean, you can pick up nice used versions like this one right here for 20 bucks just all over the place. And I haven't checked prices in a long time, but I want to say brand new, these Stanleys are 40 to 50 bucks. I don't remember them being that expensive. And with a little bit of lapping, a little bit of tuning, you can make these work just as well as some of the premium ones out there. You know, there's a lot of competition in the block plane market. But for me, the, this Veritas model just dominates. It's quite a bit wider than most block planes. It's a little bit bigger. It's got a lot more metal in it. It's heavier. I've installed an auxiliary front knob. They come with a little brass knob. And the knob controls loosening and tightening this front plate so you can close up the mouth. Um, it has some really cool features. These little set screws on either side, they're something that you will tune and adjust maybe once or twice in the lifetime of the plane. But the fact that when you sharpen up your blade and you can just kind of drop it back in and it centers it just perfectly every single time. There's no left right centering it before you adjust it in back. Makes it so much easier and more consistent when I'm setting my plane up. Just drop it in and you have a screw adjuster in back. It's quick and easy. 
the adjustments in back. It has a standard Norris adjust where you twist it to progress it in and out, and you go left and right. But once again, I really don't like the left and right. I just shove my fingers in these corners to get this micro adjusting ability and then tighten it up a little bit. You don't have to tighten it up too much after you get it set. I love the fact that it's machined 90 degrees on either side and these little finger things right here work so well with jointing. Yes, I keep one of my bench hooks with this slight cutout specifically to work with this blade. Because how many times are you actually jointing anything much more than that big for small boxes and stuff? This is perfect. It's light, it's easy, all that kind of stuff to work. This block plane can't be a great jointer. The general rule of thumb is a jointer, the, the plane you want to be uh, about a third of the length that you're jointing. Well, how many times are you jointing anything more than 18 inches? I mean, that's a nicely sized box. I also use this as my main smoother. I have my wood one for co uh, covering big, large things, but most of the time I'm not smoothing out big stuff. It's small box tops. This is perfect for it. The fact that I can close the mouth up really, really tight, add a slight camber to the blade, and then use it as a wooden body plane where my hand goes on top to press down when I'm working. In the kit that comes with this one, you can get a back knob to make it more the size of a number four. I, I don't know why I bought this. Uh, I've never really used it. But it works so well. And when I'm uh, smoothing out something with like reversing grain, maybe around a knot or something like that, I will swap in a toothing blade. You know, when I first got this toothing blade, I didn't think I would use it that much. I don't use the one in my jack that often, but this comes out quite a bit because it allows me to rough up around those reversing grain sections, and then I will use a card scraper to get those final smoothing passes. It's a lot more flexible than I thought it would be. Now, in my mind, usually there's a lot of competition within different classes of products, but every now and then you find one that just dominates. For my uses, this fat, wide, heavy, bulbous block plane is wonderful. It is my favorite metal body plane.